Hey, everybody, this is your girl, Miss Giselle. And we have none other than the fabulous Miss Samantha Lewis in the Hi, book. guys. Yes, and this is also the Black Table. So we want to make sure that that's clear. This is the Black Table Conversations with Miss Giselle. And today we'll be discussing business and everything in between. And let's start off with Miss Samantha Lewis. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am um, in my late 20s, it's like, <laughs> I am married. We have been married for 13 years. I'm married to the love of my, my life. Um, he actually, um, he's a partner of the business. He owns part of the business. Um, I also have three beautiful little girls. Um, my first is my angel. Her name is Samaria. She goes by Mari. Um, our second, she's five. Her name is Sydney. And our third is our firecracker. We call her our Sour Patch Kid. Her name is Cheyenne. Oh. And um, we we are uh, trying to show them what it, it what it means to work hard to get what you want in life. And I, I strive to do that every single day. Um, I have been in healthcare since I was 18 years old. Um, I started off as a medical assistant. And I went back to school and obtained two business degrees. Um, and recently I walked away from healthcare. We'll get into that a little bit later. And um, I also own Marilyn Photography, which is a really um, good company. Uh, of course I say that, but it's a really good company. We do videography, we do um, photography, uh, we specialize in families. I have um, had that business since 2014. Um, I started that business, not legally, you know, just like a little side hustle in 2009 when my daughter was born. Unfortunately, she was born at 26 weeks and we didn't know if we were going to have her um, for a long period of time. So we decided um, that I wanted to capture her life. So that's how it started. We made it a legal business in 2014. Well, that is just a beautiful, beautiful <laughs> story. I absolutely love how I love that passion, that drive that you have. And you create everything from even if it's a hard situation, you turned it into like the best situation. Yes. I try. I try. And find a way to profit from it too. That's an awesome <laughs> transition. <laughs> I have a lot of people behind me that pushes me and gives me encouragement a lot. Um, I, I often feel, I feel emotional right now just talking about the group of people that stand behind me and tell me that I'm doing great and that they'll support anything that I'm doing. So thank you guys. Um, I really do, uh, I really do try my hardest to be an example for my children and, and, that, and that's what drives me every day. And that is what we need is, is something I'm telling you, each and every one of us, as we keep pouring at those strengths and we have our weaknesses, but those weaknesses can be um, turned transitioned into strengths also. Hmm. But we pass those over to our children hmm. and they're able to lead the next generation of young black warriors in this beautiful world because the opportunity is here. Like that's what we're trying to fight against any Thing that'll tell them otherwise so yes, you doing it definitely you. seeing is believing and they see it in you and they see it in your husband so that's a beautiful thing now um tell us a little bit about the real estate also sure so, yeah. So well, that's really exciting as well. So um, we have a business called SNL Capital Investments. Um, this is this is like so I'm like one of those people where I see an opportunity to make money. I'm like researching it like, how oh, can I get in? Right. I get in? So um, okay. SNL Capital Investments actually started with us purchasing this beautiful home that we're in right now. I went to closing and I looked at the um, history of this home. And I said, this man made a killing off of me purchasing this home. And the only thing he did was paint it and add new appliances. And I was like, I want to flip. I want to flip and I want to be in real estate. So uh, my husband, <laughs> it's just that. My husband, I always bring my proposals to him. Like, this is my idea. This is how much it costs to start. What do you think? And so um, him and my brother-in-law, uh, Charles, we, we came together and we formed uh, LLC, um, SNL Capital Investments, where we do 
property management. We have several properties underneath us and they drive me crazy all through the night. But <laughs> because uh, sometimes uh, we have uh, maintenance guys and sometimes we have emergencies. It's always something going on. Um, and then we also do real estate where we help you prepare because the most important thing in real estate is your credit but people think right. it's your down payment so we help people with building their credit and making sure that they have a well-rounded credit profile and then we have a loan officer on our team shout out to al suma um, <laughs> and he uh helps us um with making sure that 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 buyer is qualified and making sure that they're happy with the amount that they're getting because sometimes you go to banks and they're like you can have $150 and $150,000 and the comps in the area that you want to live is $350,000. It's like, where am I going to live in a box? So um, we work on how we can help them get part-time jobs to qualify. We can encourage them to add other people to their loan, whatever we need to do to get them in that house. Um, a lot of that, I can't advertise. So it's it's right. kind of like quiet because it's personal information. So right. when, when I'm dealing with people's credit, it's not like I can share. This is this is my um, portfolio of how I boosted someone's credit. When we have a house and someone struggled really hard to get it, I want to share their story, but it's not my story to share. Right. But I often I often believe that when I sow into them, it always comes back around. Oh, absolutely. That's the way it has to be. And you know what? Some things is just the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. But so, I helped this person get this house or we did this or, you know, everybody yeah. like the backstory. Sometimes people don't even have to have to hear that part. So I, I understand. And I'm sure after they watch this, they'll probably say, you know what? I went through this. Oh, yeah. But you know what? A lot of times I'm telling I went through credit with the heck. Of, it was like credit, nothing, then born again. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot for me to understand the importance of it. If you weren't taught the importance of credit, then you're going to fall straight on your face if you just kind of jump into a world and you're like, oh, I didn't know I could do this. Or I didn't know I had to do it this way and do things this way or whatever. I actually purchased my house when I was 24, my first home. Mm -hmm. And that was so like- I purchased mine as well. When yeah, I was right, time, right. This is our second, this is right. our second one. Well, we know that you're in the, the house of your dreams, so that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, we used to drive in this neighborhood, or not this neighborhood, but a neighborhood with those cookie cutter houses. Right. I'm like, one day, I hope I have a house like this. Right. I don't know how I'll be able to afford it, but one day, and, and so that's what drives, that's what really drives me is like, when I pull up in my driveway, I'm like, this day was chaotic, but it was worth it. Right. So I, I, mean, I just try to be positive and put a positive spin on it. Oh, absolutely. I love it. Now, um, now with your success stories, what is, I guess you could tell us a challenge and you can tell us how you overcame that challenge and then sure. you found like your success in the midst of it. So I'll go back um, just a few years. Um, when I was a medical assistant, I was always pushing to leadership roles and, um, you know, I would be teaching people how to draw blood and I'm like, I'm just a regular medical assistant. Like, how can I, how can I grow? And I had a provider pull me to the side one day and she said, you're not walking in your, in your blessing. Like you really need to be in leadership. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I be in leadership? How can, how can I have them see me? I want them to see me. And she said, you have to go back to school. I'm like, oh, I just finished school. I don't really want to do it. And she said, you have to stand out from everyone else that's applying for positions. And she said, you maybe you might have to leave this company. And I was like, oh, okay. So I returned to school. And as I was to, when I was about to graduate, my mom passed away. Oh. And that was very devastating because right before she passed away, I was diagnosed with the same illness that took her life. Oh. So we have been struggling. That's an emotional struggle for me daily. Like even today, I had a hard struggle with it. Um, and then every time I found myself 
doing well in life, there was something that knocked me off course. And a lot of it had to do with racial discrimination and, and ageism. And people don't talk about it. So me being as young as I am, I became a practice administrator at 24 years old. Everyone that, everyone that reported to me was significantly older than me. So I didn't have um, the respect that I needed or the respect that they taught me in school that I was going to even have. I didn't have that. And I didn't know how to get it either because they didn't respect me. One, because of the color of my skin. And two, because I was young. I mean, what do you even know? Right. And I remember this one time, this Black doctor came up to me and she said, I don't even know why they would even hire you. I told them that I wanted someone much older, much seasoned. I mean, basically we're gonna just take all the new grads and they're gonna make our business fail. And I'm like, oh, wow. So that told me that you didn't support me. Like you you didn't want me to work there. And throughout my career, I, I ran into stumbling blocks like that where I was passed over for promotions. I was looked at as, a, as if I was less than, and I had situations where I was asked to prepare presentations. And then when it went to the board, they said someone else created the presentation. Oh. That would hurt me. Um, so I, I started thinking of, I'm sorry. I said, I can understand that. Yeah, so I mean, that started hurting me. And, and, and through that process, my husband became my rock. I would go home to him and say, this is what happened to me today. And he would say, you knew that you wrote that presentation. You knew that you did it. You know, don't worry about it. Because he's like calm. And I'm I'm like Cheyenne, the firecracker. Right. So I'm, I'm like ready to go. Like, Girl. <laughs> what do you mean Becky did this presentation? She didn't do the presentation. I have the slides saved on my computer. Right. So um, that would bother me because I'm not the type of person to just sit back and not say anything. Right. And through the years, I started noticing a pattern. I would get far. And then, but I just didn't get to that point. Like, you never let me get to a certain point. It was only like, you get to this box, but I'm not going to let you graduate to the next box. And I didn't like the fact that people could tell me how much I was worth. Wow. Oh, you're worth 60000 You're worth 70000 Oh, you made us $3.0 million this year? That actually happened to me. You made us $3.0 million this year? We're going to give you 80000 Well, you made three point five. dollars Right. I'm only worth 80,000. But me being young and naive, I'm like, babe, they giving me 80,000 world time. Right. <laughs> and then I have people pull me to the side and say, no, you're worth more than that. And right. that's when I started creating businesses to eventually walk away from corporate America. Right. So in 2019, I sat my husband down. And this is how God works sometimes. I, I don't know where it came from, but I'm going to just tell you that this really happened. In 2019, I sat him down and I said, I can no longer work around people who do not see me. I, I, it bothers me. It hurts my confidence. And what is that saying to our oldest princess who's watching everything that I'm doing? And she hears me talking to my husband. It's not like we're not at the dinner table and she doesn't see that mommy's having a bad day. Why is mommy having a bad day? And I wanted to turn that around for her. So yeah. I told him, in, I, said, in 20, I said, 2019, I said, babe, I'm only going to work for two more years in corporate America. Wow. He said, two years? I said, I'm going to hustle all the rest of 2019, all the rest of 2020. And then COVID hit. In, oh. in 2020, and I said, "Psych, I'm gonna be two more years." Because now I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't want to oh, step I'm out. Like, All of these I'm businesses like, are closing. I'm I don't like, want to step out. I'm scared now. So I got sick. I got sick yet again. And um, in 2017, I had four pulmonary embolisms and had to learn to walk and talk again. So, yep, <laughs> yep. So. To be back to that place again, where I'm, I'm having trouble talking, I'm having chronic pain, I'm dependent on medication to look normal, to talk normal. And I had a team behind me, a leadership team that fake supported me. Oh, are you okay today? Oh my gosh, just go home. And then when I went home or if I went to a doctor's appointment, it was a negative hit towards me. And it started to tear me down. And I said, God, what are you saying to me? 
What are you saying? I can't step out right now. Everyone is losing their business. I cannot step out right now. I am scared. What are you saying to me? And people kept saying, pray on it, pray on it, pray on it. I was scared. I promised my husband, I will always be there for you. I will always make sure that we're okay. And I couldn't do it anymore. And my doctor in March of 2020 said, I need you to cut your hours back. So the pandemic just started. How can I cut my hours back? She said, you cannot be around people who have COVID-19. That is the number one thing that's going to kill you. Because I only have one lung. So they said, that's the one thing that's going to kill you. I said, okay. I went to my boss. And these are clinicians. These, this is not just regular corporate America. These are clinicians. And I said- well, they know the issue. They know the issues. And I said, this is, this is what I'm going through. And they literally said to me, if you choose to work part time or work, it was four hours home, four hours in person. If you choose to do that, that's career suicide. I, okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. So go to work and commit suicide because that's what you're walking into. You Every day you're saying, hey kids, I know you love me, but I got to go in here. They said, I'm not going to have a career, but y'all might not have a mom. Like mm -hmm. what type of conversation is that? That, that my daughter said that to me my daughter um she asked me my oldest I'm trying not to get emotional she said are you are you going to be around for me and my wedding or are you going to be gone because your mom wasn't at your wedding and I had to make a choice and the reason what made me keep going to work is because she was being bullied and we had just pulled her out of public education and put her in private education. And I needed to make sure that that tuition was taken care of. So outside of everything that I felt, outside of how I offended I felt, I still pushed because I saw that little face that I could see being the, the first African-American president. She's brilliant. And I wanted to believe that even if I'm not here, she'll know that her mom struggled for her. So it was really hard to keep going into this job. But the turning point for me was we had evaluations and bonuses and everything. And I'm advocating for my staff who's single parents and who, you know, spouse is cheating on them. They have to leave the situation. And I'm making sure that they have more money because their kids are working, their kids are doing distance learning. And they're telling me, I can't leave my kids at home and they're failing. And one day a girl came to me and she was crying and she said, BSS is at my door. I said, why? She said, my son is missing classes and I can't tell him to be on because I'm here. And I'm working 12 plus hours a day for you. And you're paying me the same money. So I had to go to leadership and say, these, this staff needs support. They need more money. They need more staff. And to my own detriment, they looked out for the staff and then they said, we don't have enough to pay you. Okay. You're not, you're not good enough, basically is what I took away from it. And I had to make a choice at that time. And at that time, I was flipping pallets. I was buying pallets from a supplier. I was taking the items off of the pallets and I was selling it to my family and my friends. I started making a killing, a killing. I was like buying my husband's stuff. We, we, we doing all of these things. My savings is looking good. I'm like, wait a minute. Can I turn this into something lucrative, a, a business? And I got sick about three months ago. I got really sick. I started bleeding from my mouth and so on and so on. And my doctor said, I am no, I'm no longer going to be your physician if you're not gonna to listen to me anymore. You need time. You need to take time from work. You need to stop working so much. And that's what I decided to do. Um, I, I got a leave of absence from work and I started thinking of how can I support my family with no income coming in. And those were hard conversations to have. And I noticed something, I was able to take my kids to work. I was able, I mean, to work, <laughs> to school. I was able to help them with their homework. I was more present. And, and I loved it. And I wanted to do something where I could be their mom again and not just working. And when I'm not working, I'm sick. So that led me to where we are right now.
And don't you cry. (laughs) I know this is a lot. And that's a lot. Like, because the thing is, and this is so many stories, like you'll see throughout the month, if you follow the show, it's going to be some conversations with women that's just fighting through. You know, you have people with children with disabilities. You have people with children who are, you know, a, a lot of stuff. We are managing it. You know, with everything else against us, we're figuring is, this stuff out. But mm-hmm. that's why this is like the safe space. And this is us about this the whole conversation is, or every conversation is going to be about building us. How can we make us great? But what you're doing right now, that is what we need. That is what's going to change our narrative. And you are a superwoman. You are definitely a superwoman. Woman, one of the women I talk about in my song, Superwoman. It's definitely, it's definitely a beautiful, beautiful, sad and uplifting. It was like a whole book. You need a book. I guess that's everyone guess keeps that's saying like. you need to write a book. You need to write a book. I'm like, it's it, you. You go through things, but I feel like when I share my testimony, I get that face that you just gave me, and you don't see that person. You would have never knew that I had to learn and walk to walk and talk again, and that's what made me um, closer to my husband. Everyone has you know, defining moments in their marriage. But when you look at a man that says, no matter if you could walk, no matter if you could talk, no matter if you could have sex with me, I am going to love you regardless. I married you sickness and in health. And he walked me around the house and we had our walker and I had the oxygen. And I'm like, I'm not even attractive anymore. I'm not, what can I bring this man? He oh, wow. is gorgeous. These women going to start throwing it at him and I can't do anything about it. I know. Hold on. You're going to make me cry. I know I'm all emotional. Like, this is, like, ridiculously... Um, because what you... Like, your story... I'm so sorry. I don't, like... Getting all, it's okay. I like I make a lot of people cry, and I don't, no. I don't, sh- and I didn't even rehearse this. This is me. But that's love, but no, that whole thing. That's love, like, and that's what, that's what real love looks like, ladies, mm-hmm. gentlemen. If you're listening to it, if your man ain't, if you don't see that man carrying you when you can't walk, helping you when you're at the lowest level, that's not the man for you. That's not the man for you. And that's a beautiful, I want to say, could you shout out to that black man that you were like strong, powerful black man that you are married to. And I definitely want to bring y'all back for um, in May for our family. Of course, it's going to be other times too, but we're definitely going to discuss the family because that's our focus in May. April is about the children doing big things. Mm-hmm. March is about us. But May is definitely about the family unit. You have to bring us back for our grand opening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and let's talk about that. Let's talk about your grand opening, the name of your, um, the store. Or did you want to say the name right now? Yeah, we can say the name. So we, we ran into some hiccups this week. Um, I wanted to do it right because... I'm looking at I'm looking at Wall Street. I'm looking at other companies who have done the same thing. Tiffany, stop crying! And we I don't. It's, it's, it's going oh back in. It's going back in. I swear it is. I'm trying to pull it back in. Wow. So I'm looking. I did my research on this, and by the end of 2021, this could be a million dollar company. We've already we're already making two thousand to three thousand dollars daily, and we're open seven days a week. Oh, wow. So if you multiply that through the year, this is a lucrative business. Oh, so I wanted, I wanted to do it right. So I got an attorney for the business and I got um, an insurance uh, professional and they advised me to take it out of SNL Capital Investments and get a sub um, in, in entity. So now we have a new company because we had to create a new LLC just last week um, because if, if someone trips and falls at the rental property, or if I'm showing a house, I don't want them to be able to take everything that I have. Right. That so, makes sense. Um, we have been really working on the legal part of it. Um, we have our building right before closing. We had to change the EIN number. Everything had to change last minute because you know, I wanted to make sure that I followed their advice because I failed at that before with my doctor. I'm not going to fail at that now. So um, we change it to SNL Capital Pilot Liquidators. It will, uh, on the face of the um, 
the billboards and everything because we're going to have billboards um, on a face. It'll just say Palette Liquidators LLC, but because um, that's such a generic name, I wanted to be true to our start, our home, and that's SNL Capital because everything is an investment. So that's why that name is um, like that. We are having our grand opening. We're having a soft opening March 15th, opening it to the public just so they can see the pallets. Um, and, I, and I also, when you get to that point, I wanna explain what pallet liquidation is because a lot of people are a little confused on what, what that means, um, but we'll get into that. But I really wanted to talk about um, the soft opening is March 15th, where we'll just open it up to the public, give you a sneak peek of the space. And then our grand opening, which you already know, is March the 27th. We're doing a ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm so excited about it. Um, I, I wasn't even going to do it, but yesterday when we went viral, everyone was like, you need to do a ribbon cutting ceremony. I was like, yes, this is big. This is so huge. How like, many Black owned companies? Do you know like this here in Maryland, here in Baltimore? Yeah. Ooh. And then I found out that we're the only one in Maryland. So yes. not just Baltimore. I thought we were just Baltimore, but someone did research on it. We're the first black owned pilot liquidator company in Maryland, actually. So, you know, that is I'm the most powerful thing I've heard all day. I'm like blown away, honestly. It's all happening so fast. It's all happening so fast. You create a history and it's a Guinness Book of Records type of thing. Too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, exciting. It. it's really exciting. Um, on Friday, it was so exhilarating. Like when we were walking through the business park, meeting other people and it was like, uh, like other owners and it was just like, they were so excited. They were like genuinely happy for us. Yes. We have a staging company. I can't company. wait. I just we have a staging company. We have a staging company right next to us. I literally bought all of our furniture already for for our offices because okay. I'm like, you know, I don't know where the right. furniture is going to come because I was waiting for our pallets to come and I was like, I'll just get it off the pallet. Right. I'm like, what if it's a delay in shipping? Then I won't have furniture. <laughs> Oh no, it's separate. well, that's how you think that's project management mindset. Yes. Make sure your project is managed correctly. I get yes. it. <laughs> Definitely. But that was smart. And I'm sure you got a good deal. You're right there. Yes, they you know? I mean, I have such like uh, as you can see, I have like rustic modern taste. So I'm like, I want you know it to speak to who who I am, who we are, and also to let people know that um, we are building partnerships because they just told me that I can have a partnership with them and offer their furniture to my customers. That's even great because they put a lot of money into their furniture. So, I mean, that's it's just really great um, networking that's going on right now. And I, I feel like I was sat down for a reason to see this and I wouldn't have saw this and I wouldn't have walked away from corporate America. It's two years, two years. I told my husband two years, wow. 2021, we have walked away from corporate America. I, you know what? I cannot, I cannot even believe it. I'm like nervous and happy and my mortgage due tomorrow and all of the feelings all together. I'm telling you, it's your mortgage. It's your mortgage. So that's, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. And you want to um, give a shout out to your mom in the background. I see her peeking over every yes, time. Yes. So over. this is my mom. Rest in peace, Deborah Elaine Williams. She's right over my shoulder. Thank I you. also wanted to shout out. Hold on one second. Let me get my other hero. Um, <laughs> this is my mother in law. She passed away in 2019 when we started the company so she was able to see us start the company and she's not able to see well she see us now but in a different form um this was my second mom for the last 13 years so rest in peace to my mommy lewis linda lewis she passed away from lung cancer in 2019 so i wanted to do that as well um but I have these people, and then it's my grandma behind me. I, you know, I just have a lot of people that are my angels that are yeah. really making sure that um, I still I still have the strength to go on. Right. I mean, I remember 
three weeks ago, my auntie was on the phone with me and she was praying for me, praying for me. And I couldn't get out of my head. I was in so much pain. I just felt like everything was like on top of me at one time. And right. she prayed and she said, you're going to make it through this. You're going to get right. through this. And by the, uh, and, and shout out to my aunt Gladys. I mean, there's so many people who has really, you know, stood up and been there for me to make sure that I am able. I've had people come to my house just yesterday. My friend came to my house and cleaned all the whole house, the bathrooms, just because you see this person, but you don't see the person that can't walk. Like this morning, I could not walk. I could not breathe. I had my husband bringing me food in bed. I still am, I still am in recovery. And this is my life now. So I wanted a place that they understood my illness for real, not for fake, like they understood for real. Wow. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are a great light that is shining. This is your time. I call it. This is it. Like not this is it. This is just the beginning of the rest of your life. And the best part of it is it's, you're going to have some great things that's about to happen. That's what I feel. I really feel like some great things are going to happen. You and those baby girls, they're watching you and they're getting prepared to be just like that mom. That's what it's all about. And that's why we set the tone for our kids. That's a, that's what we do. Now, what is there? My oldest said, well, I have two businesses now. <laughs> yes, she does. Absolutely. This is a family affair. I said, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see that. I grew up around a whole bunch of entrepreneurs. So that's like, I always had that entrepreneur mindset. I never really like the idea of conforming into just like a just like a job it feel like it's locked in a box but like my grandmother she started like nursing homes well not nursing homes but uh it was group homes she had like two group homes before she had got really okay. and my mother she's a nurse she stopped nursing because my brother had special needs so she went home to make sure that he was well taken care of she nursed her son but my mother she was a nurse but she did private duty so it was kind of like self-employed. Okay. You is on your own terms. Mm -hmm. And my father, mm -hmm. business owner, he owned gas stations all across the state, as well as he he's also wow. organic. Yes. So it's like I came from that type of. That man. was smart. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And my aunt, hair stylist, one of the best that I know. Growing up, watching her, watching how she like nothing would ever like she never deviated from her goals. And I always found that to be like very inspirational. It's so when watching her and my mom, especially, and not only that, aunts and uncles and cousins, people who just go out and get a career job, hustle. That's what that mentality, that hustle mentality is my inspiration for a lot of the things that I do. So I know just looking at what you're doing, it's going to be some great things that's going to happen. We're going to go back to your grand opening because I want to make sure that people know what we're going to do, what we're going to, what you want, how you want us to show up, because that's what we want to get out there. So um, for our grand opening, um, we're just because it was just brought to me yesterday, we're in the planning stages. I already reached out to my family DJ. I want to have a DJ. I want it to be a fun time. I'm going to have COVID um, friendly, like refreshments. Um, I, I was thinking, maybe you can help me with this, but I was thinking maybe do a soft, like you can go and tour it and then we can come outside for the ribbon cutting. So okay. I, that's what I was thinking. I've never done this before. I've, I, I have never even um, been to one. So it, that's all new to me on what, I mean, what it, what it entails. I'm looking for a photographer, um, funny enough, <laughs> because um, you don't know. I mean, if you're doing, I have a lot of photographers for you, a lot of a lot of photography friends but it's just like I want it to be something that they're excited about I want to make sure it's something that they're capturing and um I want this to be a memory for not just me I'm not just doing it for me I'm doing it for the other people who don't have who didn't have the voice to stand up and say right. you know I'm going to advocate for myself and this is what the business means to me um I want to make sure that Everyone is clear that I don't solely own this business. Um, it is a family-ran business. Um, 
my goal is to employ a lot of my family. I have seen so many family businesses successful. I want to make sure that um, if I have other family members who want to walk away from corporate America, I create opportunities for them. So I want that to be displayed at our grand opening. Oh, that cool. you know we put our different aside and we're coming together to create something different something big and you know you're doing something great when you have to educate people on what you're doing if right you're just doing regular things like i'm gonna open up a retail shop um selling clothes or i'm gonna create um and and, and not to say anything Thing about people who are doing that but i remember when i started photography people always said there's a million other photographers it's not going to be like you're not going to be able to like retire from this you can and i'm like well you can i mean you just have to market yourself a little bit different but it, i mean i didn't i never had to explain to people what i did i mean they knew that i held the camera i edited it i post edited it, i could do photoshop i didn't i didn't have to explain that but right. with this i really have to explain to people like what it is and i feel like we need that avenue to kind of explain at the grand opening, what it is, how much money you can make on your own, and how do how are we able to provide these services? Like, how are we able to give you a product at a, a cheaper rate? Is it is I've heard things like, is it stolen? Um, do you have people still stealing Amazon boxes? I mean, I heard, I've heard everything. I'm like, do I seem like the person that will be behind the truck stealing? Three kids and give, me all, give me all of your boxes. <laughs> I don't look good at orange. I do orange. I don't. I watched Orange is the New Black and it's not for me. It's really not for me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, um, what was, what's, uh, okay, so we're going to come back and we're going to do a live conversation just on the grand opening specific okay. that um where you, where you want us to show up with the time and everything so once you get all of those details together i'll do i'll help you out with like an ad so that we can make sure that that's pushed out there I you know, appreciate you. show up and show out in baltimore because that's how we do even are if you coming can, absolutely yes. okay. <laughs> so I, when i heard when i saw it i was so excited oh mm. this is a beautiful thing any thing that I can get support like I just drove 30 minutes yesterday to go to a black owned hair store <laughs> so that's just how that's cool too those yeah. black owned hair stores that is awesome to me yeah. that is like that is a really good business opportunity I mean yeah. that really is that's another thing that, that's another business that's a really great especially idea. with like weaves and all that a lot of people I don't mm -hmm. do weave but I do mostly natural hair but mm -hmm. I mean for each his own I go all the way down into Baltimore to a lady. She's really nice off of Rice's Town Road. Go down to her um, store, and that's where I get my um, hair product. I think I saw it on, um, I think it went viral. I think her uh, business, I think I saw it. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I saw people sharing her products and okay. the inside of the store. And I was like, oh, that's far, but. <laughs> I would, love, I would love to have um, like more places because we really can do it. I mean, a lot of people, they don't understand that a lot of, a lot of businesses are getting their things from overseas. Why aren't we doing that? Why right. aren't we? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when it's a good point, I, I always say exactly. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. And we really, I think some people, we didn't know all of this time because we was locked out of so many spaces. But in 2021, it's no way. You're not blocked. We know what to do now. And mm -hmm. even when they try to do things, we know how to agitate the system to get what we need to get done. Mm -hmm. So I like the way that you guys are positioning it uh, amongst other people who are positioning themselves right now to be leaders and to help create a choice so that... I know in 2020, oh, in 2053, there was this prediction made that Black Americans were going to be at zero wealth. So I wow. said, what can I do to change that narrative? And we all have to know this. So to go fact check me, look it up. It was talking about based on the data and our spending habits and everything else, they predict that Black Americans will become have zero wealth as a racial group by 2053. So I said, how can we change this narrative? Because right now we allow so many things to dictate 
our culture, so many things to dictate our behaviors. How do we change it? So I was like, I'm going to start my show. I know we got the red table. That's cool. Red table talk is like a little balance because it's everybody talk. This is the table where you come to and we get our mm -hmm. people up here. We start knocking down some of these barriers so that we can get to the next level because I'll be darned not with my life, not with me being here on this planet. I would never want to see that mm -hmm. happening. So I wanted to create a platform for people like yourself and everyone else to come out and pretty much show, hey, this is what we're doing. You can do something too. Walk on, walk on purpose, live on purpose. So mm -hmm. with that said, is there anything that you would like to close with? Is there anything that you would like to leave our viewers with today? I, I would just like to say thank you for the opportunity to you. Um, I, I would like to say thank you to a lot of, of people who have reached out to me in the past couple of days. Um, and and ha they have given us a chance, a chance to explain who we are, um, what our mission is, and what our goals are. I mean, that is that's worth more than to me than money, than you spending money, because you're going to tell someone and that person is going to tell someone. So I, I, I honestly want to close with, you know, just saying thank you to everyone who has um, supported me um, personally, professionally, who, who has taken care of our, our family through these hardships. Um, and now as we transition into our new season, um, I'm very happy to have a group of people behind me supporting me and making sure that we all win together. It's not just about, it's not my success it's our success yeah. and um, I'm really happy that we are able to um, do this uh, this interview I definitely want to come back I love your energy I love talking to oh, you you can be a therapist oh, really? <laughs> hilarious I, I go to um, therapist periodically who's probably watching <laughs> but yes yeah. I definitely enjoyed this talk um, and I, I'm looking forward to the future Absolutely. Well, I tell you, this was one of the best. Like, I really, really, really appreciate this conversation. I'm so excited about the direction you're going in, you and your husband and the baby girls. We're about to change what they predicted for our history. We're about to show that that's non and void. So with that said, everybody, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, peace and blessings.